I'm at the laundromat, <laughs> as you can see, and I did not bring my nice lav mics. Um, and also, I did not bring my tripod, so I've got my, <coughs> um, oh, I just hit my vape. Um, <coughs> um, so, I was considering rescheduling for an hour from now, um, and just doing it then, but here we are. So, yeah, I guess, uh, I don't know. What do y'all think? Raise your hands if you want me to reschedule for like four or something. Come on, chat. Or do you want me to just go ahead? We can just do it live. Fuck it. What do you think? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> live in the moment. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! There's a cricket on the floor. Hi, cricket. You're still alive, too. Okay. Anyway, so today is, um, I, I have been without booze for two and a half months. It's, um, I can't remember how many days. It's like two months, two months and 15 days. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and so... I've been trying to get to this point for the last two years, basically, and I've had a few times where I was um, sober off of booze for like two months at a time, and that's actually the longest that I've ever been able to, to do that. So after I passed the two month mark, a couple of weeks ago, um, then it was like every day is breaking a new record, so that's really exciting. Uh, and uh, I have no desire or intention to like go back to drinking. Uh, I, you know, that was never really like an option. I didn't want to continue living in that kind of headspace and I've been doing a lot of like um, I don't know trauma work as they call it and working through a bunch of other stuff like the reasons behind because it's not it's not the alcohol that's the problem right it's my relationship with uh, substance abuse and also um, like my relationship with myself and my own internalized trauma like there no substance is inherently evil in and of itself it just exists and i've talked about this on my stream before with uh, my philosophy on drug use and you know it it still stands although i did do those talks while i was still like kind of low-key drinking not um not like 100% without, but I was kind of more on the, the lighter stuff, you know, just like a few seltzers, but, um, yeah, so my, it still stands, uh, I, I still feel the same way about, uh, harm reduction and substance use and substances in general, look, these are my, my stuff, this is my things, <laughs> I just do the whole stream like this. There, you got a nice background to enjoy. Oh, there's my sheet. That's actually kind of badass. Look at that. <laughs> All right, that's gonna be the that's gonna be the cover photo. Out of order. Most of the shit in here is out of order. This is some good ambiance. I say, I, 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 I'm telling you. What a happy accident. Um. <laughs> kind of fun. Yeah, it's kind of fun. All right, we'll just, we're just gonna sit with that for a little bit. Um, anyway, yeah, so it's been really nice. Uh, I've been getting a lot more stuff done. I'm finally at the point now that uh, it's, it's just not really like hard for me. I'm not, I don't go to a bar and see people drinking and think to myself like, oh man, they're so lucky. I, gotta, 
I just want it so bad. Like it's it's really not like that. I, uh, I I've fucked up enough times that the desire is fucking gone. Uh, and I think that people really do need to get to that level because if you don't really want it, like truly and for yourself, then you're not gonna stick to it. It's not gonna it's not gonna stick. You're not even gonna get through your fucking dry January, and you're gonna feel like a fucking loser about it because you couldn't even fucking stick to your resolve. Well, the thing is, in order to have a resolve, you need to come to some actual serious conclusions. And if you're not there yet, and at that point, then instead of trying to like force yourself to abstain uh, for a certain amount of time, you should maybe just focus on cutting back and like assessing yourself and your headspace and where you're at and why you feel like you should um, why you should cut back or quit or um, just kind of kind of just assess where you're at with that emotionally and and how you can come to a conclusion where you decide that you do in fact want to quit whatever it is that you're struggling with uh, and, and that means being really, really honest with yourself and like looking at your own behaviors, taking responsibility for your own actions and the ways that your actions have impacted other people in your life. I think it's really important to have a reflection period and kind of really decide for yourself uh, that that is what you want for a reason. For me, it took me fucking up with people that I care about uh, just a couple of times and mostly making some stupid decisions that put me at risk more so um, and others, but less of a risk to others like, uh, like fucking driving and shit while I'm fucked up. That's why I got... I mean, I was driving a couple blocks. Now, I'm going to be real. I have definitely driven longer, uh, longer, spa uh, what is that? Whatever. I've, I've gone further driving while drunk than that, which I got a DUI for last year that I'm still dealing with. Actually, I got to pay them back now. I owe them 125 fucking dollars that I don't have. So if you want to help me pay off my DUI from over a year ago, uh, hit up the hit up the PayPal uh, or the Venmo. Thanks. Um, so yeah, I got to pay them back. I just got off the phone with them today, and then doing like monthly checkups and shit. That sucks. If you've been drinking and struggling with alcohol and you haven't caught a DUI yet, um, don't. Just don't do it because um, it sucks and you have to deal with it for a long time. And it, yep, it's just the gift that keeps on giving. But anyway, so, you know, n not only that, but um, just putting myself in danger and, like, fucking up my body and shit. Uh, I had to keep slamming my head against a wall for so many years before I finally got to the point where I was just like, okay, I'm fucking over this. Like, you know, I know, I know where this goes. And... My dumbass has to keep doing the same stupid shit over and over again, um, expecting a different answer. And you know what? I'm, I'm over it. I got bigger fish to fry out here. I got other things to do. So I, I really just had to fucking come to those conclusions for myself, which took, um, yeah, many, many times of making the same... Uh, Many times making the same mistakes. The Hatter's Madness says, Corn, I kicked down on PayPal. I'm not sure if you get notified. I, I'm i so sorry that I, I don't. I've been trying to fuck with the notifications. I did have them set up so that I would get notified. Um, I don't know why it changed. Maybe because of updates or something. But I'll get that turned back on. Thank you so much, the Hatter's Madness. I really do appreciate you. And I'll uh, take a look at that after the stream. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of drinking, I kind of feel like I want to get a drink, um, like a soda pop or something. Now, take a look over here. This is the Circle K that I 
took the pizza out of day before yesterday. And um, the person at the counter started pulling pieces of pizza right out of my hands and said, you can't do that. And I said, I'm taking these. And she went to try and pull the other pizzas out of my hand like a fucking savage. And I just like fucking moved my hand away. And I was like, no. Nope. And just walked away. And she was fucking talking shit about me in Spanish as I walked away. Um, and I'm pretty sure her coworker was kind of just like, okay. Like, yeah. So if that was you, get a fucking life. If you are a person that works at a gas station or other equally stupid shit job, um, and you find yourself concerned about somebody taking food out of a garbage can, then um, you need to reassess your entire worldview and you need to rethink your life. But uh, yeah, in the same way that those of us who have problems with substance abuse need to reevaluate our life. <laughs> Not to mention drinking every day gets real expensive real quick. Holy shit, dude, you're telling me. I feel like I really have my shit together now because I'm not spending every last fucking dollar on more drinks. It really does get expensive. On my sobriety tracker, my, my app, I set, uh, I set my amount of money spent a day for like what I used to drink, not when I dialed it down. But if I was drinking like I did a couple of years ago, every day still, um, A, I'd probably be like dead uh, or near, nearing death um, in a really bad fucking way for sure. Uh, I've, I've had friends my age that I used to drink with fucking keel over in the last few years. It's real shit. Uh, not, not only that, but like I would have nothing I would have no money at all like I, I I mean I spend a lot of money now on like other shit like tools and uh, delicious expensive treats from time to time because I'm not spending it on booze but um, like I've spent I've saved thousands and thousands of dollars in the last couple months like I want to say like two grand I haven't spent on booze or some shit like that maybe maybe that's even a little bit of a conservative number. I don't know. If you think about it in monetary value that way. But um, I do barter for a lot of my shit too. So who knows. Food is a human right. So also from the dumpster. Yeah, seriously. Like what kind of a fucking sad sack is going to get mad at me for grabbing pizza for my homie out of a garbage can instead of getting mad at the system that has them putting pizzas in a garbage can? Like what in the hell is that? You know, reassess your fucking angle. That's dumb. Yeah, I think I'm gonna, uh, I'm not going over to that damn Circle K. The Circle K in Calipatria where people give a shit that you take fucking pizzas out of dumpsters. Um, I'm gonna go right across the street, or not across the street, right around the corner here. Um, and go pick up a nice drinky, a little drinky poo. Yeah, and I'm gonna leave y'all with uh, Master Micah for a moment here. Hey Micah, do you want to drink or anything? Sure. From the gas station? Mm -mm. So I don't have my mics and I don't have my stand so I don't know. I was just wondering if you would hold this for a minute yeah. while I go into the store mm -hmm. and get a drink. I can do that. And if you want to um I'm talking about uh, just sobriety and substance use and stuff. Cool. But you can also just like sing a song or like just hang out. All right. Or whatever. Sweet. The fuck. All right, you guys, intermission. Intermission. All right, I'll be right back. Hi, I'm your intermission. Um, good to see y'all today. Hi, hi, friends. How's it going? Um, yeah, we're just chilling here at the laundromat. Um, wound up taking a little longer than we were expecting. Um. And neither of us can find our tripods, so, um, yeah. But fortunately, there's a little divot in the subi here where y'all fit perfectly, which is very nice. Um, yeah, on the topic of sobriety, Corn and I were talking about this earlier. And, um, 
so I have never been through like a 12-step for a substance, um, but I wound up in 12-step for uh, something else. I did Codependence Anonymous for like a number of years and found that super useful. But I think it's like interesting um, how like there's like this this like dominant social thought that like uh, any of the 12-step groups that out there are like the end-all be-all of recovery for anything or anyone. Um, and I think that's kind of too bad because there are, there are lots of many different paths up the mountain. So, um, that is what I'll say about that. Yeah. Um, what else can I talk about during intermission? Um, yeah, our mission today was laundry and, um, I think candy before we leave town. Uh, I'm like dangerously close to buying like a whole box of Reese's peanut butter cups and just like going to town. That could be fun. So, yeah. We'll see what happens. Um, I've definitely been on kind of like a sugar kick, uh, recently. Yeah, the Reese's are so fucking good. Like, I don't really like sour candy. Um, but if there's peanut butter and there's chocolate, those are like the two things that my body physically requires emotionally. Um, and, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're super good to keep around. And they're so yummy, like, and they're so easy to eat. They're just, like, soft and tasty. Um, yeah, I'm, like, trying to dial back my sugar lately, but it's, it's a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, but anything peanut butter, honestly. <laughs> All right, I'm back. I got me a bevy. Mm. It's kind of a cool spot to set the phone. Yeah. when when it's raining and look at this we got oh that's nice yeah that's nice there we go got a view i don't know why it's like more oh i guess it's a little bit more on your side there we go hey there we go nice was the pizza nazi there no no a different spot i'm i'm patronizing the uh more homegrown uh the yeah, Market Liquor right across the street from Circle K has been here for years and years and years. Circle K just got here, like, I want to say last year. Um, they're brand new. Nobody invited them here. Market Liquor has, I don't even know if they, oh, it's called Calipatria Queen. My bad. It's just, like, the, the fucking, the corner store in Calipatria. You don't need a name for it. There's just the one. Um, but, yeah, they got, they got pizza, five bucks of fucking pizza, and... They got drinks and, I don't know, whatever stuff. But yeah, they, they've been here for a long time. So I got, I got shit from them. Um, yeah. And they got better prices on gas, too. There's really no reason to go to the Circle K anyway. Do you know if they take card in here? They do. I'm about to go in and buy some candy. Ooh, candy. That sounds great. I'll be back with candy. All right, cool. Hell yeah. All right. Oops, dang it. Ooh. -hoo. There we go. Okay. Jeez. Candy. <laughs> Y'all are cute. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, uh, fucking month and a half, or two and a half months. Uh, no booze. It's been really great, actually. There hasn't been, like, a point where I was just, like, ready for it to be over. I I actually have a lot more fun, n like, going to parties and events and shit now that I am sober. Um, I'm gonna just say sober. I'm not sober. I do drugs, uh, just to be real. And I don't fucking subscribe to, like the whole all or nothing thing. I'm a punk and uh, I'm into harm reduction and I'm into radical acceptance and radical self-awareness. Um, harm reduction is kind of important as like a philosophical idea um, to me because it's about accepting people where they're at instead of condemning them for not being able to like have conviction for whatever. And the thing about like um, like AA meetings or like true sobriety, like, the way that, whatever, um, the sober ideology is actually really damaging and alienating to people who would otherwise maybe 
be looking for a support system. So if that's you, if you're somebody that's like not totally ready to give up your whatever your uh, substance of choice is, but you think that maybe you need help uh, getting to that point, look into harm redux. Um, see if there's any like punk rock groups in your area. Um, just look up like harm redux or harm reduction services. Uh, there's a lot of times like um, volunteer work associated with that or like local scenes that you can tap into that will help uh, support you that you can s bring support back to. And the cool thing about harm redux is that um, just open it, babe. The crinkling is fucking. Oh, sorry. Hey, can I get one? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, harm redux is like, it's, yeah, it's kind of a radical ideology, and you don't have to be sober to go to, like, harm redux meetings, and, um, you get support. It's like, if you're a heroin addict, for example, um, you can go to a harm redux group, and they will freely give you clean needles and syringes and like vitamins associated with whatever you're using or whatever. Um, and not only that, but they'll hook you up with like um, medical support and uh, options for looking into programs that will help you get sober or um, at least kick shit. Like nobody's, nobody in Harm Redux is asking you to get sober. It's just like... You know, if something is a problem and you want to kick it, then they want to make it so that you can access what you need to do that. Instead of saying, you know, like shunning you for not being sober enough. Um, which, it, you know, it's it's counterproductive. Um, so that's, that's my biggest gripe about, like, sobriety and recovery circles. Is um, just the fact that they kind of alienate their target audience. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, if you're like me, and um, you just really can't vibe with that shit, but you feel like you need some help, um, look up local harm redux groups, and get tapped in with, um, with anarchist and punk activists in that area. Um, just do that in general, honestly. Because it's good for you. It's good to find community. That also helps with um, with kicking stuff is finding community and entering a support system that actually accepts you instead of um, ostracizes you for the very things that you need help with. Mm. Mm -hmm. High horse has got no place. Hell no. That's what I love about punk rock. We ain't fucking riding around on high horses with a fucking holier than thou attitude because like we're doing something or whatever. Like that ain't it. And I really really appreciate any sort of movement that dismantles uh that sort of behavior. Uh that othering behavior and um hierarchical behavior. Hierarchy is not to be confused with um, social roles, of course. But that's a different topic. I'm actually, um, my anarchist rants typically get um, a lot less traffic on them, so that's why I haven't really been doing a whole lot of them. But maybe I should. I don't know. And also, it's a touchy subject. I'm waiting for some fucking... Twitter SJW group to come after me for some of my fucking opinions, but that's whatever. I'm not on Twitter anyway. They probably already have. Who knows? Probably not. Who gives a shit about Twitter anyway? I'm gonna go in and check the laundry time. Okie dokie. Okay. Yeah, y'all get to be on a laundry date with us. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Rainy day laundry date. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't nibble on Reese's, that whole fucker has got to go in. I'm not about to <laughs> stick an entire big cup in my mouth while I'm live streaming and, like, talking to you guys about 
<laughs> heavy <laughs> issues. <laughs> just be like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's um, that's not. That's not the way. That's it's not the sustainable. It's the potato chip kind too. It's the I've potato chip kind. kind. Oh, I love that one. Uh huh. So good. I'm trying to make this last. I already had like four Oreos for breakfast. Oh my god. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I know. <laughs> when did you eat four Oreos? In my van. <laughs> When you just go to your van to just like secretly snarf down cookies? I was there looking for my for tripod breakfast? and then when I couldn't find it, I ate four Oreos. <laughs> I think you need a support group. <laughs> <laughs> I need something. <laughs> I've always said, you know, sugar is America's favorite drug. Mm. <laughs> I need something. I think it's more sugar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To fill that hole inside of you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, I'm going back in. It's a rainy day. Oh yeah, this is looking almost, oh, it says it's got 25 minutes left, no way. No, 19 minutes left, okay. I'm just gonna check on this here, and I gotta throw away my shit. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's see. Honestly, these these feel totally dry to me. Yeah. Yeah, this feels dry. Okay, I'm gonna get the thing. Whoops. It's gonna be nice to have clean clothes, you know? It always feels good. Clean and sober and fresh fit. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. All right, anybody in chat wanna, wanna tell me about your sobriety journey? Hey, um, these are done. Okay, cool. You wanna grab my mesh bag from the back? Yeah. Load it up. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Oh, I found another cool spot to leave this thing. Hopefully. Oh, yeah, that's a good spot. Okay. Anybody else share with me um, where you're at uh, on substance use? And, um, yeah. Maybe, maybe you've been trying to cut back a little bit lately, or um, maybe you're... 10 years off of heroin or something. Let me know in the in the chat there. Mm. The thing about the thing about kicking a substance too is not just like having it not in your life and just not being around it because that does help for you to get off of it. But if you don't ever address um, the reasons why you started using in the first place, then it's just gonna be like something that is a problem for you to be around. Like a lot of times people think that uh, having alcohol around me is gonna like trigger me in some way. And it really doesn't. Like it's not, like I was saying in the beginning of the stream, it's not like, um, not like I'm being deprived of something that I love, you know? It's, uh, it's, it's just like I'm fucking over it. It's like seeing somebody with your shitty ex. That's what it's like. It's like you go to a party and some bimbo is hanging off of your stupid ass, the worst ex you ever had that you like are still healing from. You're not jealous. Uh, you're definitely going to feel a type of way, but you're not going to be like, Oh, if only that were me. Um, it, it's just not like that. So if you, if you come to terms with, with the reasons that drove you to that behavior in the first place, that's what it feels like. It's like breaking up with a shitty fucking partner that doesn't serve you. Let's see. 16 days, no beer for Wasatch Traveler. That's awesome. Longest in a long, long time. Badass, dude. 
yeah, every single day you wake up and don't drink beer, it's the new longest time. That's exciting. Catton says, little puff for me, never liked alcohol, was raised around big time alcoholics. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, you've said that before, and that definitely, uh, I mean, being raised in that environment goes one of two ways, right? And fortunately, you went the other way. Smoke and kush every day for over 15 years. Wow. Well, you know, I like smoking weed too. I'm not, I'm not sure if you feel that that's a problem for you or if you're happy with that. I don't know. I'm a neutral entity. Like, if somebody was an alcoholic and they could argue with me why it's a good thing and that they're happy with their life, and I truly believe them, I would be like, all right, man, <laughs> cool. Like, <laughs> it's not my concern. Um, but if I could see that they're like physically dying and like in a bunch of trouble with the law and with their family and friends, then I, I would be like, well, you're a fucking liar, dude. And you're lying to yourself too, because clearly it's not good for you or doing anything for you. Um, and that's kind of cause like, you know, that's, that's where I was at. Um, you know, I had a million fucking reasons why I couldn't quit drinking and that that's just the way it is. Uh, and simply not true. <clears throat> I've never been able to have just one. Cannot buy anything in being okay, but when I restart, it's a race to the bottom. Oof. Oh boy. I quit alcohol 15 years ago, could not quite, could not take the hangovers anymore. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, fuck that, I ain't got time for all that. Plus getting older and my body couldn't take it, yep. HW grew up around alcoholics and addicts, so I have a certain relationship to it all. Only thing I get out of hand with is weed most coincides with me burying my head in the sand and costs too much. Yeah, it sure costs a fucking lot. Um, I get spoiled with weed around around here because it's just like it's goddamn California. All right, we're gonna head back to slabs, and I'm just gonna keep chatting with y'all. And um, Mike is gonna be the camera dude right now. Here, you can flip it around with that. Just make sure. Hold on. Just make sure you don't fucking fuck with anything else on there, or the stream will drop. I and, shan't. Okay. Mm -mm. I am the tripod. Actually, you know what? Why don't you drive us back? Yeah, I was actually okay. wondering about that. That's a great okay. idea. I didn't even... Yeah, I didn't even think about that. I could drive the Subi. <laughs> okay, you get to drive the Subi. Never let anyone drive my whip. Alright. <laughs> and then we can go and see the, uh, the new sign. Yay, the new sign. Yeah. If the stream drops, we had fun. That's right, folks. It wouldn't be the first fucking time. But, uh, you know, you get what you pay for, I suppose. Oh, here, let me move these. These are not. There we go. Yeah. Let me get back to the fucking library sign. Show that off. Um... I'm, I'm so glad to have that out of the way now. That was like a one a, a one day project that turned into a three day project because of situations. Okay, so here's the, uh, this is the gas station I went to. This is the good one. And we got the hardware store and the donut shop. That's where we just got flautas. Where are you going, babe? Oh, I'm disoriented. Just, yeah, there you go. Flip around, baby. All right. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yep, this is the big Calipat downtown. You want to take a right, babe? There you go. Whoops. Yeah, I've been living here for a while, so it's like... <laughs> I know I know where this shit is. Yep, there's the shitty Circle K. Fuck you, Circle K. Get better employees and... uh. 
Let me have fucking pizza. I didn't. I don't even eat pizza. I was getting it for somebody else. Fucking judgmental ass piece of shit. <laughs> this is the kind of shit that drives a man to drink. Fucking Circle K. Circle K is the root of all of my problems. And um, they robbed me of 20 years of my life. Because, uh, actually I don't even know if Circle K existed like 20 years ago, to be honest. But I'm just going to blame them for everything that has ever gone wrong in my life. Circle K made me an alcoholic uh, and uh, put me in jail twice. And uh, that's also why I dropped out of high school. You should call in a complaint to headquarters. I should. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call Circle K and ask them what they're going to do about um, my, my therapy session bills. And uh, my DUI <laughs> bill. Oh yeah, speaking of which, if you want to get down with the kickdown, there are links in the description. I am about to pay off a fucking, uh, yeah, DUI bill from last year. So, I'm trying to do that. And that'll be great. Yeah, I'm going to turn the camera around here so y'all can see some of these cool spots. We got a lot of like little old farmhouses out here, pretty sweet. Other than that, not much. So it's always pretty, uh... Always pretty gorgeous out here when it rains. First Circle K opened in 1951 in El Paso. That's interesting. But... I grew up in Minnesota, so if they didn't have Circle K's in Minnesota, then I would have never seen one. Circle Gay is so much better anyway. Where is there a Circle Gay? I want to go there. Sounds, uh, sounds good. Right next to the Femboy Hooters and the Goth IHOP. Oh hey, that's funny, we got a, a hater in chat, it looks like the mods already banned him, but it says uh, you got a man acts like a woman, a woman acts like a man, good couple. <laughs> which is which? I know, <laughs> which one is which? I'm so... This, yep. Uh, Tim Craig is a confused troglodyte. I'm so sorry that you're, you're lost. It's a big world in here, man, and the internet is a real scary place where you get to see people from all over the world. Sometimes you see things that your little fucking pea brain isn't ready for, and, um, well, I'm not here to apologize for it, but I do wish you luck out there, buddy. I really do. Hope that you have a great day, Tim Craig. And, um, sorry about your wife. Uh, you'll get him next time. Probably not, actually, without an attitude adjustment. Um, anyway, we don't have Circle K and PA. Circle K is all over here. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking about the Midwest. When was the first Circle K built in Minnesota? Some some uh, some keyboard warrior is gonna tell me here. Let's get it. Who's got the info? They want to build a Dan Murphy's behind my house. If I go to jail, you all know why. Arson. <laughs> what a wow. All right. Lee Pizarro is gonna burn down the fucking Dan Murphys. We heard it here, folks. This is a, this is a hot, hot tip. God damn, I love it out there. There's this, uh, oh yeah, check out that, peep that fucking water tower, baby. Oh, that's way too close. Yeah, that's a good looking water tower right there. Oh, and I got a string of cars over. Oh, you can't see it, it's out of focus, there we go. I don't know what kind of industry is over there, but they're filling those tankers, that's for sure. Cool. Yeah, and there's a... Uh, did we already pass it? No, we didn't. There's another industry coming up here. Oh, I think we actually did pass it. It was Gavin. But they got a bunch of um, Connex boxes they're filling with something. I'm not sure. I think it's like maybe some byproduct of some local uh, crop here. 
possibly even sugar, honestly, or sugar byproduct, rather. I don't think that's a sugary article. Um, I think it's some type of seed or hay. Probably, honestly, I would, I would suspect it's hay. But, yeah, I don't know. Definitely something that I'd like to ride out on, though, at some point. This, uh... This line of track that we're driving along now is part of a main line that runs between LA and Georgia. So that's pretty cool. That's actually pretty fucking cool. If you don't know anything about any of that, then um, I'm, I'm sorry that you don't understand why that's so fucking cool. But I'm not going to explain it to you. Because, uh, yeah. Anyway, this is uh, a... This is a driving in the rain after doing laundry and talking about Kid Boom's stream. Not a train explain video. Oh, hey, here's some more train shit, though. Let's see. We got a uh, junk train sided out here. Oh, shit, that would be mine. That would be my fucking train, hey. There's some boxcars on that. We got a bunch of grainers there. Nice, very good. Wait, is it moving? I can't, no, it's not moving. Okay, cool. Whoops, sorry about the raindrops. I got excited, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm foaming. Hardcore. Hardcore foaming. That's what they call it when people get excited about trains. They call them foamers. Uh -huh. They're just like, oh, it's a train. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, it's like getting excited about literally anything in life. Like, things have the meaning and value that you give them, right? It's like, you know, if I was really, really into shovels or something, or really, really into, um, like textiles you know it's like <laughs> it's just like weird <laughs> like why do we care about the things that we care about i mean at least you can eh, never mind i'm not gonna trade explain anymore but um there is value to certain things like if you're really really into textiles probably you make stuff with them um so that's useful to you so it's relevant to your life and stuff i don't know it's like uh making anything your personality like drug addiction and alcoholism some people are so quick to fucking you want to how's me you know i'm like well i'm just a new species of human that runs on and uh it's embarrassing <laughs> it's embarrassing hogwash ain't nothing special about you that makes you more apt to use something that wrecks everybody else but you. You're just wrecking yourself even worse by being delusional about it. Sorry to say it, if that happens to be you, but like, you ain't fucking built. You are, we're all fucking built different. What the fuck do you mean? It, it's, it's a bunch of, a bunch of fucking nonsense. Um, yeah, the only thing unique about you is how persistent you are in building the illusion that you need to be in a certain trajectory in life. Um, and that that's just the way it is. That's, that's the way the cookie crumbles. That's the conditions of your birth. Like, it's not. You can change anything you want. If something ain't working for you, then do something else. It's that simple. And if you can't do something else because of whatever reasons, then identify what it is that's pre preventing you from making moves in that way and dismantle that first. And then if you go and try to change 